ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's Christmas time. Yeah. Whee! Welcome in one and all. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Thursday, December 24th. It is Christmas Eve. 2020. Christmas Happy Eve. holidays, everybody. Very, very exciting, and we have a mega show today. Mike called it the Santa Ladon. Santa Ladon. This morning, uh, Jason opened with a jolly ho, ho, ho. Mm -hmm. And we have so much on today's oh, so much. championship episode of the podcast. How many matchups are we going to cover? 70. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, we have taking it up to 100, a ton of news to talk about, all 16 games this week. We even have a little something special. You're a mean one. Mr. We have some Grinch. some Grinch sightings today. Be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for that mean one. <laughs> that seasick crocodile. He really is a heel. <laughs> mm. Starts of the week. Boom boom kicker. Prop it like it's hot. And uh, by the by the end of this episode, you'll have won your championship. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, because it's going to take you probably through Monday to finish. Right. You'll be accumulating points throughout the show and uh by the end you'll be you'll be victorious. Now Mike, uh back in the studio. That is correct. Um nice to see you. I wish I could say the same. <laughs> uh, and you can see Mike, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, mostly Mike. And how are you doing on the, the tilt meter for this week? Because you have a oh, lot. Oh, brother. You're in a League of Record championship oh. game. Uh, look, I was doing actually surprisingly well. I was holding up. But then the more news that comes out, the more difficult my flex decisions have become. It is preposterous that I thought my lineup was set on on a Tuesday morning. I woke up, you know, just oh, I'm, I'm fresh, yeah. I'm feeling good. It's locked in. I know who I'm going to play. And then the news just keeps shaking things up on an hour by hour basis. And a lot of that has to do with uh, what Antonio. Look, Gibson, I got, I got Tony practicing. Pollard. We got Antonio Gibson. We got what's going on with Keenan Allen, Antonio Banderas. And, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Antonio Banderas tilt this week. Yeah, yeah I haven't like, heard that name in a little while. Like, do I watch Assassins again? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> it is the Christmas season. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of your conundrums are ones that our listeners are facing as well. So, and they're all afternoon games. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that. All right, it's starting to show through a little bit. I, for one, am not tilting. I'm playing Tom Brady over Josh Allen. I, I just, heard. I, I just heard. want that he, to be known. He's locked in. He's locked in. Nothing has changed. Nothing has convinced me otherwise. We'll break the game down today. It will have no impact upon me, and I will stay staunch with my right decision, Jason. We always say, stay solid. <laughs> that's That's one of the sayings from the show. All right, let's take it to 100. Taking it up to 100. Presented by Head and Shoulders. Available at Walmart. All right. I'm very excited. I Yes. I have tied it up. Yeah, I, I could have locked it to a, at least a tie yes. heading into the final week. And then uh, I was poo-poo Smith-Schustered. Yeah. I had Chris Godwin. Jason Whoa. had Jeff Wilson. And you had Juju. So now we're tied. Now there are two weeks left. Championship week and then that extra week. That we call it week 17. Are we playing through week 17? We are. Yeah. We are. Oh, okay. So okay. the trophy's on the line, Mike. I now, thought this was it. So we have uh, are taking it up to 100 players. 
<laughs> there is there is some banging. I don't know if it's bleeding through there's the microphone. The, there's some banging that we're hearing outside the studio somewhere, and I get we get a message from Brooks that Santa's on the roof. <laughs> Tell him to keep it down. Well, I know Santa. Batman. Santa would be pleased with the three of us. I mean, we got the the Christmas hats on. Brooks, of course, has his holiday cap on, and then there's one Grinch. That's right. And it's it's Al. Al's wearing you know a regular baseball cap. Uh, to be fair, you guys are wearing my Santa hats. Yeah, we can't afford another Santa hat. <laughs> you have the company card. Yeah, that's on me. <laughs> All right, taking it up to 100 players for week 16. I'm going with Antonio Banderas Brown <laughs> against D- uh, Banderas. Always yes. has it at 100. It never goes below 100 for him. No, senor. <laughs> It's too uh, sexy. Uh, <laughs> been impossible to trust Antonio Brown. One good game in one week, one big play last week. But I think in championship week, he's going to take it to 100. In perfect 2020 irony, AB will win you a title. Uh-huh. He will take it to 100 with Tom Brady against an atrocious Detroit uh, defense. I, I I like AB this week. Yeah, no, I... I- I like playing around with the Tampa, <laughs> uh, playing around with the Tampa Bay wide receivers. It's it's hard to be confident in exactly who it's going to be, Evans or Brown. But the matchup is great, and um, I, for taking it to a hundred, I, I like calling your shot there. I'm going with another great matchup. The New York Jets are who I want to throw the ball against. Mm-hmm. I love Baker this week, and so his pieces should be good. They and should I, be good. And you like uh, Rashad. Richard Higgins. I do, and I don't like him as much as, say, Jarvis Landry. I would love to start Landry. He could be a start of the week, but I think Richard Higgins is someone that you could pick up and have a big game from two of the last three games. Uh, yeah. Can I just talk about – I'm dying <laughs> What is here. happening over here? Emphysema, Christmas do need, emphysema. Uh, do I need to uh, jump in? Oh, my goodness. My throat said, not today. <laughs> <laughs> um. But two of the last three weeks, he's been a top 15 wide receiver. The matchup is great. And if you're, you know, struggling and you've lost guys, um, I think Rashad Higgins could have a big week. Uh, You know, this is not perfect analysis, but I did play a game of Madden against my son yesterday, and Mm. Landry came down with two Hail Marys. So he could have a big week as well. I mean, I feel like I don't know the rules here. I always try to go deep on the on the taking it to 100 because mm-hmm. Jarvis Landry will. No, Jarvis, that, I would. He does not apply here. No, right? you would have been vetoed. Well, right. I, I would have let it slide because he's so far out of the championship <laughs> race here. <laughs> yeah, I went deep. All right. Well, speak, I like the pick. Speaking of that, I also did not want to go with a primary option of uh, Amar, like Amari Cooper from the Dallas Cowboys, but I believe that Ceedee Lamb against the Philadelphia Eagles, will take it up to 100 this week. We have Michael Gallup, who's a little bit banged up. Uh, let's, let's track what's happening there. But the last four games, Philadelphia has given up top 12 production to the wide receiver position. The Cowboys have the second highest implied total for an underdog. They're going to score points against Philadelphia. And I think that CeeDee Lamb here uh, burning it out of the slot, I think he can get it done, take it up. To 100. All right, take your hair up to 100 with head and shoulders available at Walmart. Pick yours up today and check out next Tuesday when I take the lead. And um, I hope not. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I do like that we all have kind of the secondary or third option on each of these teams. It should you make know, for th- an interesting. I week. thought this was it, so I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna take a putt in. I'm I'm not laying up. Right. No. I'm taking CD Lamb. Yeah, I like it. It's good. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, this is big news. The Dolphins activated Carol Baskin off the reserve COVID-19 list. Carol uh, Baskin. That's huge news uh, because this shifts two players, right? Miles Gaskin is someone you should start, and Savon Ahmed was someone you should have started sure. while Gaskin was out. Derek Carr practiced fully on Wednesday. Ooh, my groin. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, anybody – I think we had a question uh, from someone this week thinking, wondering if they could start Marcus Mariota. Uh, the I, answer now looks probably like a no. This is wild, man. I I, I did not know this I had just until moved just on. now. I yeah. just moved on from Derek Carr, figuring he was going to miss a week. You're keeping, uh, keeping the Derek Carr news coming, Brooks. We did not know that he was practicing in full. That's interesting. I don't want to play him against Miami. No, no. 
Uh, Matt Rule said Christian McCaffrey is doubtful to play against Washington. Womp, womp. Not practicing in full, not going to play. But what if I want him to be healthy and play? He will be for next season. <laughs> it's tough. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe he could completely redeem himself for the 3% of us that made it through without him. Ezekiel Elliott on track to play in week 16 against the Eagles. Uh, Mike, Zeke. your Tony Pollard uh, Look, man. Zeke parade. Just take a vacation, man. Rest up. Be be healthy for that awesome Week 17 matchup. Isn't it weird that if Zeke plays against the Eagles, we're not excited for Zeke? Correct. But if Tony Pollard plays against the Eagles without Zeke, we're excited for Tony Pollard. Also correct. Probably why Zeke wants to play, <laughs> so that he doesn't have two weeks of Tony Pollard dominance yeah hmm. the problem i mean when you're looking at that from just for fantasy is you know that zeke is banged up and the dallas cowboys know that tony pollard is good so it just turns into a bit of a timeshare for sure instead of just tony pollard being awesome yeah and it makes it could give you some clarity on your your start sit situation you don't yep. have to have pollard in the consideration if if zeke is healthy yeah congrats congrats the, <laughs> the, the problem is you zeke is going to get hit with a Game time decision, and he's an afternoon game. We all know this is what's happening. I can't wait to watch Mike the rest of this week. <laughs> it's tilt. I mean, Christmas is, is nice and exciting, and the kids and all that. But I'm really, I'm excited for Mike tilt. My, my favorite part is randomly through the day. He he hasn't been in the studio. <laughs> just out of the blue, he just posts in Slack just some message about like, oh no, this guy's. Uh, do I start this? Just t this means it's on his mind at all times throughout all days. I'm yeah, in just, it. just out of the blue last night at, at 7 p.m., Gibson, Pollard, Keenan, all afternoon games. <laughs> Hilton is the morning. All my super high-risk guys are in the afternoon. Face palm graphic. This was not in yeah. response to conversation, just an overflow from Mike's brain. I am nips deep in this <laughs> swamp. <laughs> well, let's hope we can pull you out. Oh, man. Uh, not I, I don't volunteer for that job. Tyreek Hill didn't practice on Wednesday. He's been dealing with some hamstring stuff. It's Wednesday. I'm sure he's fine. Uh, Hunter Henry missed Wednesday's practice with an illness. It's Wednesday. I'm sure he's fine. All right, this one's a little more interesting. Kiki QT was limited on Wednesday's practice with a foot injury. It's interesting to me because, you know, Chad Hansen, Kiki QT are both out on the – oh, Mike's tilting again because he has Chad Hansen. I have Chad Hansen on my team. Yeah. What is – what is happening? Why is the world doing this to me? Just give me my championship. I've never seen him like no, this. No, this is so I mean, off-brand. I've been telling you. you, Yeah, this is off-brand for Mike, the stoic Mike. <laughs> this is my brand. <laughs> are you Are you small talking now? Is that where you've gotten to? If you're in an elevator, are you overflowing with, you gotta, with your fantasy you team? you got to pump the brakes over there. Okay. <laughs> with that. If Kiki QT is limited, it, it, it could – change the decision for yeah, it could chad hansen's upside this week oh is he an afternoon game please mike you can just you can take the rest of the show off and worry about your roster he's uh, a morning game antonio gibson gets in a limited practice on wednesday that's surprising yeah that will have an impact on um maybe some confidence levels of jd mckissick if that's a start sit decision you're making between him and other players the Washington football team fined Dwayne Haskins $40,000 for violating COVID-19 protocols. They also stripped his captain status. Oh, did they? Yeah, which seemed appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I'm the captain now. Uh, He's going to start. Dwayne Haskins is going to be the quarterback. You, think, you don't think there's a chance Alex Smith is out uh, there? Uh, okay, so... I guess if Alex Smith is healthy, he's the guy, but he I don't... He was limited on Wednesday. There's a chance. But I'm just saying Haskins is not going to be benched. He's going to play. The worst part is, is knowing, is out. knowing Ron Rivera, knowing what happened this week, knowing where Dwayne Haskins was on the depth chart when Kyle Allen was healthy. The last thing on this earth that Ron Rivera wants to do is start Dwayne Haskins. So yeah. if he has to start him, that is just back against the wall, no other options mm -hmm. at all. So any other news that we need to talk about? I mean, getting back to the Hanson thing, like if QT was out, Hanson's a good start this week, right? Yes. Yeah, he should be guaranteed enough volume. Obviously, uh, Brandon Cooks would, you know, be a good start as well. Yeah. What about Jordan Akins? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. He Can like, he catch with his bicep yet? Uh, no. He tr no. keeps trying. Yeah, I know. All right, we have the fantasy forecast. All sixteen matchups to, oh. to break down. Before we do that, 
we want to say thank you to our sponsors that keep this show going, keep the lights on, and um, allow us to reinforce the roof in case somebody's trying to break in. in Santa's not getting in here. All right. I want to thank Zendesk for sponsoring the show. Everybody out there can relate to horrible customer service stories. I am a cliche. The older I get, the grumpier I get, the less I enjoy <laughs> waiting on hold and being transferred from some customer support agent to the next one for what feels like hours and hours and hours. Zendesk gives businesses everything that they need to stay connected with their customers. They communi- You can communicate seamlessly across all of your channels, which there are a lot of now in customer service, email, phone, chat, messenger, community forum, help center, social media. So Papa Josh takes care of on this side of things. Uh, and Zendesk calls that a conversational experience for your customers. They're connected, ongoing. It's natural customer interactions. That's what Zendesk does. You can see for yourself why the best customer experiences are built with Zendesk. Get started at Zendesk.com slash footballers. That's Z-E-N-Desk.com slash footballers. And, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and goodness, my uh, what's happening today? I think I think my body is afraid of this show. Is not you know mm. it's, it's 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 not prepped. I didn't get a good night's sleep like I I do for a megalodon, and my body is freaking. You out. You were right up now. late. Uh, yeah, I mean normal late, like midnight. Okay, that's 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 just that's called bedtime. <laughs> All right, uh, you're, but, you're still a young man. Yeah, but you want to know uh, how I was in my house? I was safe thanks to Simply Safe. Professional transition, uh, si- mediocre transition. Yeah, it wasn't that great. But look, Simply Safe is what we use to protect our studio. We've talked about Brooks, all his riches. He protects it with Simply Safe. They have a ca- uh, you know cameras, uh, monitors for s- smoke and fire. They've got uh, arsenals of of glass break sensors. You can set it all up. It's super easy. It's high quality stuff. And they have the best monitors in the business with 24-7 protection. So if you need the police or fire or an EMT, you're you're secure. It's wonderful products. It's yes. been highly rated by everyone. We genuinely recommend it. Right now, you can get a free home security camera whenever you purchase a Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You also get a 60-day risk-free trial, so there's nothing to lose. Visit simplysafe.com slash footballers for your free security camera today. That's simplysafe.com slash footballers. Fantasy Forecast. All right, the week 16 matchups, all of them, each and every one, all 16 of them, about to happen right now, right here. Here we go. Uh, we do have one game on Friday, christmasfootball.com. Oh, man. Three on Saturday. 11 on Sunday, 1 on Monday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday for championship week. Happy days. <laughs> we hope. We hope they're happy days. Yes. Uh, it is important in this championship week. I mean, we're used to the Thursday night football, get mm-hmm. your players out of the flex. But there, there's with the games so spread out, if your players are playing early, if you're in those first three games, make sure you get them out of your flex so you've got you know room, especially this time of year, Players could pop up on COVID last minute. You need to have flexibility Sunday morning in your championship game. Yeah, and when you're tilting, try to spread that maximum tilt out over all four days. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to just really overwhelm one day. All right, let's start with the game that Mike and I will be uh, hoping gets us off to a very nice championship start. Hope it gets you off to one as well. The Minnesota Vikings on Christmas Day taking on the New Orleans Saints, who are 10-4, and Vikings 6-8. and Saints are 6.5-point favorites. It's a 50 and a half point over under. I'm excited about this game. This is a great Christmas Day matchup. A lot of exciting, relevant fantasy players involved in this game. Drew Brees, Kirk Cousins. It's going to be fun. Dalvin Cook. This is a something's got to give situation. Dalvin Cook has been unbelievable throughout the year, obviously uh, on a lot of championship teams. And here he is facing the New Orleans Saints defense that is one of the best in football, the best in football against the running back position. I mean, it's irrelevant. It's 100% irrelevant. Um, If if there's a defense that can shut him down, sure, it it could be the Saints. But the two best defenses against the run 
by a an, 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 an enormous margin are the New Orleans Saints and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he just played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and they, they did stifle him. He was only the running back 11. He was still an RB1, but he wasn't, like, top three. And that's kind of what I expect here. He's he's We're going to need a little more. Oh, I know, You're going to want a little more. You're going to need a little bit more from other players because I, I don't think he's the running back one on the week against the Saints, but he's just too good. Some guys can't be stopped. 41 opportunities three weeks ago, 26 uh, two weeks ago, 29 last week. He will keep – well, they'll give him the ball, and then it's a matter of mm -hmm. playing the odds. Does Dalvin Cook find a way the way that uh, Miles Sanders found a way against the Saints? I wish he was playing Detroit. That would be better. But, you know, whatever. All right. You're still playing Dalvin Cook. Um, Alvin Kamara, you're still playing Alvin Kamara mm -hmm. each and every week. He, he should have a nice week this week. Uh, games – Without Michael Thomas, 21.4 opportunities per game, uh, including nine targets. He has Drew Brees back. We should feel as comfortable with with standard issue Alvin Kamara mm -hmm. uh, this week. Emmanuel Sanders. I think he's an interesting name yeah, this week. I, I like Emmanuel Sanders. I mean, the, the, the last three weeks, he's been averaging about 15% of the targets. This was, you know, Drew Brees, if, if you watch the game, Drew Brees looked a little bit concerned about his body. This was not the normal Drew Brees you see. Uh, I believe it was even Romo was calling the game saying, you know, Romo, or that Brees looks shaky. Give him some time. So I, I expect Drew Brees to be a lot better in this game, especially with, in a better matchup against Minnesota. I like Emmanuel Sanders uh, as a potential waiver wire guy that you could just pick up and throw right into your flex. Yeah, I, I agree, and and Breeze looked so bad to start that game. Yeah. last week it was. I I thought I was like, is this is this the end? But he got it together by the end, so I agree. He should be better uh, this week than he was last week. And and uh, Breeze is someone that I think you could play. He was in consideration when I was looking at starts of the week because I, you know, the matchup is there. He's good but obviously being down Michael Thomas is not uh not a positive in the pros yeah. and cons columns I I can't trust Jared Cook too after last week that that seems concerning um I I don't know the opportunity's there you could take your shot yeah the opportunity and the matchup is solid for Jared Cook so that is unfortunate yeah so I put you in a position where I mean let me I play Jared Cook over Cole Komet I'll play Jared Cook over would you play him over Irv Smith in the same matchup yeah, yeah. Ir Irv Smith is only in play for me if Kyle Rudolph is actually out. Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, both in your lineup. No questions asked. Uh, for what it's worth, Justin Jefferson coming onto the scene. Adam Thielen averaged 9.2 targets per game from 2017 to 2018. He's averaged 6.3 targets per game this year. So uh, Justin Jefferson making his mark, going to be a player we talk about for the next 10-plus years, I think. Hopefully. All right, we ready to move on to the Saturday matchups? Yep. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 9-5, and five, taking on the Detroit Lions, 5-9. and nine. The Buccaneers are 9.5-point favorites. It's a 53.5-point over-under. The situation right now in Detroit with the coaching staff, it's uh, not good, and the wide receiver coach, Robert Prince, will be the interim head coach on Saturday. Now, Daryl Bevel was calling plays. Right. So now the wide receiver coach, Robert Prince, will be calling plays. Both teams have gotten it done through the air this year. Detroit has the six most passing yards. Matthew Stafford will be playing in this game. And then Tom Brady got it done last week. Jason started the week last week. And uh, really, two yards away from a four-touchdown, 400-yard game. Are we feeling very, very confident here? I mean, you know I yes. am. Yeah, I'm extremely confident in the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the uh, the weapons, everything, everyone is in play here uh, for them. Yes, the the wide receiver roulette game you have to play. It's not, you know, the, it's not the sturdiest situation, but you know that there's going to be a bunch of production to go around. I, the storyline to me is, what type of a play call do the Detroit Lions go with? I mean, I, I imagine they script up you know, as much as they possibly can, like Daryl the Bevel will give them a sheet and says, you know, please follow this as close as you possibly can to open the game. And because things had turned around, Matthew Stafford was going down the field over 20% of his throws are big time throws. Like last year when we saw Matthew Stafford really 
turn into a fantasy stud. So that, that won't change here. That, that's I don't think it can. I don't think it will. But I'm just saying that that's a that's a variable now that is in play. Yeah, I. I this is going to be a lopsided game. That's the way I see it. Coaching matters in the NFL, and this is going to be a unique experience. You remember when, you know, I would say quarterback matters in the NFL as well. Remember when uh, there was a, you know, no quarterback for the – When there was a wide receiver when playing When there was a wide receiver playing quarterback. Here is the list of changes. The head coach, the offensive play caller, the defensive play caller, the defensive backs, the linebackers, and defensive line coaches – all are totally different people. They put out an official uh, suite of, you know, uh, Ty Warren, uh, who is going to be the defensive line coach, who was the minority mm -hmm. coaching assistant. I mean, it, everybody's in new roles this week. Right. Like, I don't know what that – we don't know what that looks like. We've never seen anything like it, but it does say start your Buccaneers. That's what it says to me. Yeah, and, and this is a game, like you said, nine-and-a-half-point favorites. The Buccaneers are favored in this game. Detroit's defense has been atrocious. Having backup coaches is not going to help the defense. And Matthew Stafford, if anything, will be given more control over the offense because of that position. Marvin Jones, we're going to talk about him later. He has been heavily, heavily targeted over the last four to five weeks. Kenny Galladay will not play. Marvin Jones is a must start for me. I'm, I'm with that, yeah. DeAndre Swift, 73% of the snaps last week. That's a career high. Tampa Bay is allowing the most running back receptions in the NFL. There is upside for DeAndre Swift this week. Yeah, and speaking of heavily heavily targeted, I mean, the, the dude just is automatic. It's five targets. You're, you're going to get five targets. Is that you have, what he's done every yes. week? Yes. I mean, the last four games, it has been five targets. And he only has one game where he has four the, fewer than four targets. And, this and week. it's really important in this matchup because while the Buccaneers do give up targets the running back position, they are outstanding on the ground. You're, you're not going to run easily against them. So it's nice that uh, Swift's involvement in the air, that gives me the confidence to play him. We'll talk more about Brady later. It's a great matchup. The Lions are, are awful across the board. Ronald Jones is not expected to play, which means Leonard Fournette is Leonard Fournette interesting. Leonard Fournette is 100% in play. Now, we, we, we found something out yesterday. Oh, this is unbelievable. Uh, I told you that my son mispronounced Leonard Fournette's name, and he called him Leonard Fournette. Um, that's his brother. Yeah. That's his Look actual that. brother's In name. In real life, his brother who plays football. For LSU, played for LSU. Yeah. Leonard Fournette. Their parents named their children Leonard and Leonard. Dude. <laughs> okay. I want people, we, people, people keep the names close, man. They they did. That's and, real and now close. The, now the joke is kind of dead. Yeah, because his brother's actual name is Leonard. So yeah, but, we thought we were insulting him. Like, oh, we said your name wrong. We were just calling him his brother. Like, ah, you're your little brother. Yeah, got Which, him. That's that's a little bit of an insult. Doesn't to call play someone the their little brother. Um, yeah, that's true. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown. It's all about the matchup. If you have them. You have a reason to play them because of the matchup. But How would you order them? I would order them Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin. I would do it that way too just because of the uh, the big play for Antonio Brown. But um, if you want a floor play, Godwin's going to be safer. Yeah. I I say that and Godwin's put up you know an, an 81 overall week for two for 25 two weeks ago against the great Minnesota matchup. I I still would go Evans, Godwin, Antonio. Hawkinson and Gronkowski are both startable tight ends this week, without question. Um, Hawkinson had a down week last week. It was kind of came out of nowhere, but he's the tight end three for us this week. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you you know everybody has a bad game, especially at tight end. Don't don't freak out from one from Hawkinson. He's been solid on the year. Yeah, I mean we know the rule. Sometimes you get hockey leaves. Yeah. Sometimes you get the hawk strap. Yeah. Yeah, and same for Gronk. Gronk, it was a bad game, but sometimes you get Gronkulies. Sometimes you get the Gronk strap. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but he he did have seven targets, uh, and Brady was in zone for him. targets yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, drawn penalties and stuff just didn't go his way. The San Francisco 49ers at five and nine take on the Arizona Cardinals. Another Saturday game. Cardinals are five point favorites. It's a forty nine and a half point, or I'm sorry, a forty nine point over under. The Cardinals could technically clinch the division, or not the division, clinch a playoff spot if some things go right along with a win. Yeah, that's not happening. Kyler the, the Murray. The Bears would have to lose to the Jaguars. 
Stranger Things. Strange, last yeah, week, the uh, I don't know if you know this, the Jets <laughs> Jets beat the Rams last week, and uh, the Bengals fair. beat the Steelers last week. That's fair. All right, C.J. Beathard is going to be the starting quarterback for the 49ers. Brandon Ayuk has been automatic. Ayukin. And I don't think that changes. They build the offense around one wide receiver very often. No Debo. Yeah, and, and their involvement is not just down the field. They manufacture touches for these wide receivers. So, um, 495 receiving yards in his last five games. Yeah, matchups don't matter to me. Who the quarterback is doesn't matter to me in that offense. Brandon Ayuk is, is an absolute must, must, must start. If George Kittle is in, we talked about it yesterday, you're playing him over the majority of tight ends. Mm -hmm. He would be my tight end four. What if he sits again, though? I and wouldn't play him. And Jordan Reed is the starter. C.J. Beathard loves a good tight end, and the options are they are not plentiful right now. Is Jordan Reed in streaming tight end consideration? He he is for me, but just because you know that the last couple of weeks he's been – he's scoring, and that's all you want in your streaming tight end is an opportunity that they score. Yeah, it's fine, but I'm not going to go Jordan Reed over any of the uh, – I wouldn't go Jordan Reed over Jared Cook. Uh, we've seen more out of Jared Cook in the offense and his, you know, ability or or a Noah Fant or guys like that. I'm going to play all of them over Jordan Reed. I agree. I agree. Reed has not delivered on the uh, any of the hope quite yet. No. To, to be fair, he's been forced to play with backup quarterbacks. We were, I was excited when when he was going to be uh, with Jimmy Garoppolo. The the targets are not awful for him. Though if you look back since returning from the injury, you know, six quantity, but maybe six. not quality. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm just saying you you're trying to find volume at the tight end position, and he's essentially averaging five targets a game. What about if you look across the field and Dan Arnold? Do you go Jordan Reed or Dan Arnold in that situation? That is so rough because Arnold is much more of a lower uh, yeah. target volume, but big and, play. But big play. I mean, three for fifty four last week. I, I would go Reed there. Uh, you, you've got, I mean, I want my player playing more than, you know, 30, 20% of the snaps. Um, Dan Arnold's involvement isn't enough to me to where I feel like there's a baseline. There's a baseline with, with Reed. All right. Circling back to the running back position, Jeff Wilson. My name is Jeff. Should be starting this game. We know Raheem Mostert's out for the rest of the year. Uh, Jeff Wilson, they seem to have a lot more trust in him than anybody else in this backfield. So, if he can stay healthy, this is a, a pretty interesting matchup. I'm going to give you some start sits, though, that have been coming through the website. Jeff right. Wilson or Lev Bell against Atlanta? Jeff Wilson. Uh, I'm Lev Bell there. I am Levy on Bell I am there. so 100% fine with Lev Bell there. They're, right. they're identical because they both are being forced into opportunity and they both have some problems and baggage with them. Jeff Wilson or Daryl Henderson? Daryl Henderson for sure. That would be Jeff for me. Um, J.D. McKissick or Jeff Wilson? That decision's probably made for you with the Antonio Gibson. If if it, if Gibson plays, it's easily Jeff. Right, but, but this game not, is earlier. You'd have to make that decision based on not right. having the Gibson news. If Gibson is out, I'd rather play McKissick, I think. All right. Oh, oh my uh, gosh. He did it again. Oh, my gosh. You old so-and-so. <laughs> We got. I'm going to. I hope that someday I remember that when we start talking about McKissick, I uh -huh. need to be fearful. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'll tell you that. Uh, Kenyon Drake was out snapped by Chase Edmonds last week, 36 to 34. Yeah, thanks, Kenyon Drake. He got injured, if you remember, missed a significant yeah. chunk of that game. You're talking about Kenyon Drake? Yes. And Chase Edmonds hasn't practiced in the last couple of days, so he's somebody that you know. We're recording the show on Thursday morning. Um, we're not going to be recording a show tomorrow. That's why this is a, a huge episode. Santa Don. So you will need to follow up on some of these reports tomorrow, especially with this game being a Saturday game. Is Chase Edmonds going to be active? It, you know, it makes sense to me. He was limited in practice last week, played a full allotment of, sla of snaps. It's a Saturday game. Giving him an extra day of practice off heading into Saturday makes sense. I don't have a reason to believe he's going to be out this week. There was nothing on the field that made me think he was going to be out this week. So... It'll be both of them. Um, we have Drake at the RB eighteen this week. It's not a great, it's not a great week for Drake, but he's always a chance to score. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think running back eighteen is is perfect. He's a he's a running back two. This should be fine in your 
you know, as as your secondary option, but it's not a not a great matchup, and he's got some health concerns. The Miami Dolphins at nine and five, taking on the seven and seven Los Angeles Ra or Las Vegas Raiders. Dolphins are three point favorites. It's a forty eight point over under. Miami is currently in seventh ahead of Baltimore. Vegas is ninth. Uh, both teams love running the football. They'd love to run it 30 times against each other. Uh, Las Vegas has the highest rush rate when leading a game, although that'll be a difficult thing against Miami this week. I don't think that this is a super complicated matchup for fantasy purposes. Sure. Because I don't think Tua is really in consideration for championship week. Derek Carr certainly isn't against the great Dolphins defense. You know you're starting Josh Jacobs, but Mr. Grinch. Oh, we got our first Grinch. Is Jacobs your Grinch? Josh Jacobs is my Grinch. Oh, no. Of the week. The a mean one. Let me preface this. You are not sitting Josh Jacobs, but I am very concerned. Like we talk about Dalvin Cook. You know, the, great, the matchup says Dalvin Cook will probably be more outside of the top five. But and you can't bench a running back with volume. But I am very concerned about Josh Jacobs. Why you got to Grinch my my guy on Christmas of all days? Because over the last eight games, Miami has given up points to one backfield, and that was that really fluky Denver game. If you remember, they're shutting everyone else uh, down. Other than that Denver game, they have held team running backs outside of the top fifteen. The Dolphins are allowing the fewest points in the NFL. Did you guys realize that? That is how elite the Dolphins' defense has been. They're allowing only 18.4 points per game. They run a slow game. They're 25th in pace of play. And then, uh, then we got a little game here. Uh, do you want? Do we want the drop? I want the drop. All right. I want to play a game. This game is called Josh Jacobs or James Conner. Oh, 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 brother. This is unnecessary. But it's fun. <laughs> yes, it is. Let's hear it. Josh Jacobs or James Conner, who has more rushing attempts? Josh Jacobs. Yeah. It's Josh okay. Jacobs. Yeah, that's, that's set up for the rest it, of the stats. It is. A, it's by a wide margin. Okay, so 245 uh, to 143. But who has more 15-yard runs? Josh Jacobs or James Conner. I know that Josh Jacobs has had extremely few uh, long runs, so I'm going to go James Conner. Yeah, then. obviously. It is James Conner. It is 9 to 6. All okay. right. Top 20 performances. Josh Jacobs or James Conner. That feels like it should top, be Jacobs, top but 20. See, if I if you said top 10, I know it's Jacobs. Top, top 20, 20. It, you're trapping us. So I guess I'll go with stupid James Conner. <laughs> Jason uh, I agree with the logic. I'll go James Conner. Oh, it was a trap. They're actually tied at okay. seven apiece. <laughs> All right. But, uh, and how about this? We'll, we'll finish with this one. Yards per carry. Not not the be-all, end-all, but it's still a fun stat to talk about. Oh, I, I have no doubt that. Oh, man. James Conner's been so bad, though. Yeah. But, but he's had an equal amount of huge runs, and Jacobs gets the ball 37 times when they're up at the end of a game. And That's fair. I bet it's close, though. It is James Conner at four three and Josh Jacobs at three point seven. This is uh, this is what I said. It's unnecessary. Ja no. Josh Jacobs is a much better runner. Is he? Yes, <laughs> he definitively. Is. He yeah. is. But but no, your point is well made. This is a difficult matchup. Yeah. The expectations. Here's why it matters for fantasy. Josh Jacobs, you've locked and loaded him, and Mike's not saying sit him. No. But now you have an expectation. Now it determines how you play your flex position. You might need more upside. You might need bigger play. You can't go floor. Exactly. If you're staring down a, a, a stupid decision like I am in one league where I have to decide between Frank Gore and Ito Smith. Look, Gore is a 20 carry for 47 yard, maybe falls into the end zone once every two years player. Ito Smith, is an, it's an invisible upside. We don't know what it is with no Todd Gurley involved. So I'm going to go, if I need upside, with the unknown as opposed to the floor if I think Jacobs isn't going to give me a big game. So I... Love Miles Gaskin on the other side of the ball here. Uh, coming off the COVID list, knowing the guaranteed workload's going to be there, knowing he's the guy. If it wasn't Gaskin, I loved uh, Savon Ahmed, but I love Gaskin now that we know he's going to be Gaskin's, back. he's just topped off with premium. 
<laughs> yeah, no, he's he's ready to rumble. I I love starting Miles Gaskin this week. The the Las Vegas Raiders defense, they've been bad. Then they've been injured. Uh, you know they were missing. They were down four starters last week, and now they're pretty much eliminated from the playoffs because of their loss. So you've got a team here that has something to play for in every way in the Dolphins, and a team now that is kind of let down from losing their what to play for game last week. I, I love the Dolphins in this matchup. Now, we're sitting Devontae Parker? Yeah, I just don't know that you could trust a wide receiver for Tua. I agree. Oof. And he's been limited in practice, too. Nelson Aguilar. Miami's cornerbacks are outstanding. I think Aguilar is probably a sit, too. Yeah. If you have a if you have any type of better option, I would not be going with Aguilar. Gesicki's been limited, like like Chad Hansen. Even even if Kiki QT plays, I would rather play Chad Hansen over Aguilar. Yeah, I would mbop there over mm -bop. Aguilar. <laughs> Darren Waller, yes. Mike Gesicki with the limited tag. Are you a little worried there, or I, would you put him out there? You're you're probably going to play him. He, uh, you know, he's been a top ten tight end the last three weeks. So the last three games, the last three games, because he didn't play last. Correct. Week. Yes. The Atlanta Falcons at four and ten take on the thirteen and one Kansas City Chiefs. Sometimes I just forget about their record. I assume they never lose, and it's pretty close to that. It was the Raiders, right? That was the one game this year. That is correct. Um, they're ten and a half point favorites. It's a fifty-four point over under. Kansas City has played in six straight one-score games. Oh. They've won. They've won them all. Interesting. Um, which means they haven't covered the spread very often. Imagine, uh, you know, 10 and a half points. That's pretty big here for Atlanta. Um, Patrick Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey are your locks on that side of the ball. Yep. Lev Bell is going to see a lot of work. So I have confidence in Lev Bell as an RB2 this week. Yeah, I have I, I have the a little bit of confidence in the running back, too. I mean, like, Lower end running back to how much like, projecting Andy, what kind of opportunities are you thinking for, for Lev Bell? He did. He saw 16 last 15 week. 15 to 20. Okay. Same, same general, you know, Clyde went down in the game and the, the tendency right now for Kansas city is to play Lev Bell early in the game anyway. So he's getting a lot of, he was getting a lot of work to start uh, each and every game. And then with Clyde's injury, he just finished with that. So I think 15 to 20 is right. Which is great for a team like Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, if if you can if you can guarantee that he gets fifteen plus touches for the Chiefs, then he is a good flex worthy or an RB two type of player. I I I I don't think it's outside of the realm of possibility that Kansas City has a far lopsided pass to run ratio in this game without yeah. Clyde Edwards Alaire. The fact that you know the the Falcons have been very good against running backs this year. Uh, stout on the ground and a sieve in their secondary means why why run the ball when we could just dink and dunk and throw deep and across the middle and everywhere we want against the Falcons. So I'm less confident that he's guaranteed for a massive workload. But if he gets it, I I, I mean that opportunity is king in fantasy. I was curious what the pass attempts per game for Patrick Mahomes has been this year versus last year. And uh, he's averaging four more pass attempts per game this year. 38 a game versus 34 last year. Not e enough. Even more, <laughs> more reliant on the pass game. What's funny is that you really can't play McCall Hardman or Sammy Watkins or Demarcus Robinson despite that fact. Like, mm -hmm. there isn't an option at the, at the two. It's really crazy. I mean, there's Kelsey and Hill soak up everything. And honestly, for fantasy purposes, it's delightful. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 wonderful. They have no problem doing what you think that they should do on every play. Exactly. Right? And that's why I think maybe they'll just throw it more in this game because it's like, yeah, but why would we why would we waste time running it when we could just On this, this play we could throw it at Tyreek or Demarcus Robinson. What should we do? Yeah, Tyreek every time. It's like they just do what works every time. All right, here here's the interesting storyline at running back for the Falcons. They've made they've come out made a public uh, pronouncement Raheem Morris saying Todd Gurley's role's changed. Edo Smith is our guy. Um Edo Smith is he's in consideration this week. As painful as that is to say, the last 4 weeks um 
he's been okay. 4.5 per carry, not a lot of opportunities, but this could be the week where the opportunities change and Kansas City's allowing the most running back receiving yards in football. <laughs> I, I, so I hate Ito Smith. I've always thought he's not very talented, not as good as Brian Hill, who's not that great. Um, and I'm terrified of him because sure. I'm, I'm playing in a championship against uh, Kyle, our editor, where he just lost Savon Ahmed, and he's and this is in a dynasty league. He was able to scoop up Edo Smith, and I don't want my comeuppance from Edo Smith. You don't want to say that you lost to Edo Smith. No, that would terrify me. And uh, he's still a risky play because you just don't Extreme. know if the opportunities are going to shoot up or not. Well, it, to me, it's not even just the opportunities. It's the what do they do at the goal line? Because that, that's what Todd Gurley's value was, was scoring touchdowns. And if Ito Smith is getting, you know, 20 opportunities between the 20s, then you have a, a Devin Singletary uh, situation with a player who is not as good as Devin Singletary. You're, so, you're not wrong. He has one five-zone attempt on the whole year. Right. So if they, if they just decide Brian Hill's going to be the guy who gets the carries inside the five, you will be – Brian Hill has two – Five yeah. zone attempts on oh, the year. Yeah, Gur Gurley has a lot of touchdowns. Yeah. Saying I, I don't know who it's going to be, but just when you're making that decision of Ito Smith, you need to include that variable of you can't guarantee he is actually the the goal line back. It's tough because if you're making that decision on Ito Smith, you have lost Raheem <laughs> Mostert, <laughs> you have lost James Robinson, you, you have, have lost, lost somebody, everything. and you've lost a little bit of your heart. I mean, I mean like Ito Smith is a smaller back. He is a sub 200 pound guy. Meanwhile. Brian Hill is a 220. Russell Gage playing catch up here. Do you think Russell Gage is a good option? Eight, seven, ten targets the last three weeks. Yeah, he's he's been coming through a little bit. Gage more or Mbop? The, ooh, I'm I'm a Gage on that one. Yeah, I I think I go Gage. I was what hesitant. if Kiki's out? What's that? What if Kiki is out? If Kiki is out, uh, I will probably still play Gage. Okay, by a, a, a hair. I mean, 91 percent of the snaps last week. That's his highest by far of the season. It's funny because I think that's what Hanson's was last week too. Mm -hmm. And um, they're both not the number one option, even right. if QT is out. So, Where are you going on that one, Jay? Uh, I would go I, – I, I think because it's so close, I would really enjoy Mbopping uh, mm. in the championship. I see. I so see. So I'm going to go Mbop. Yeah. Russell Gage, wide receiver 13, wide receiver 16 in the last two weeks. It will be interesting to see what happens in this game. Hayden Hurst actually scored last week. Is he an option? No. Okay. I I would like us to definitively say no on as many tight ends as possible. Okay. No. Because I'm, I I'm out on Hurst. I think it's more helpful because I there's always a narrative street with a tight end on how mm -hmm. they could fall into the end zone. So the more we say no, the easier it will be for listeners. Well, and in your championship week, you don't want to rely on a guy like Hurst. No. It ends up he'll put you in one. Oh, in a Hurst. Yeah. Okay. A hearst. He'll put you in a hearst. I mean, it, it, it worked. Let's move on. <laughs> the Cleveland Browns at 10 and 4, taking on the 1 and 13 New York Jets. Jets on a, a winning streak. Uh, <laughs> Browns are 9.5 point favorites. It's a 47.5 point over under. Baker has been on fire over the last month. Quarterback 12, 3, 2, 12. No reason that should stop this week. He is uh, a great option. And he's been finding a way, and the team has been trusting him to make that big throw, and he's been – he's just been great. Confidence goes a long way, doesn't it? It certainly does. As does the weather that allows you to throw the ball. I mean, I know we brought it up a lot, but he's – It's it's a big-time piece of the Cleveland Browns and Baker Mayfield's season. Yeah, so it's one of those things where he might have – just, he had a lot of good weather last year and didn't look as good as he looked over the last four weeks. I agree. Obviously, he had a very down year, but he's still young in his career. He might just be better than we thought to start the first half of this season. Well, the most troubling part is what you actually wanted to see from the beginning that got disrupted by weather, which is no OBJ. Baker without Odell Beckham has been good, good Baker. Yes, his rookie year. Yeah. He was great. He gets Odell Beckham. Not so great. It's crazy. He's not good yeah. with him. Baker go, uh, Beckham goes out. Oh, Baker's back. And where does confidence come from? Confidence comes from knowing that you have control over the offense and that you can throw the ball where you need to throw it, not, oh, crap, is he getting enough touches? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
It's going to be and, interesting to see what so happens with all, Beckham moving forward. So all of that said, all of the the narratives on him, Baker is a good start this week. I mean, yes. He, yes. he was one of our streams of the week. Uh, he was absolutely in consideration for a start of the week. There are uh, certainly quarterback options where I would choose to pick up and play Baker over this week against the Jets. The Jets are the number one rushing defense in fantasy points given up over the last six weeks <laughs> in football. <laughs> yeah, no, I, there's I, a reason for that. You're, that, that you're saying because the Jets are not allowing points to the running back? Correct. Yeah, because 31st to the quarterback, 30th to wide receivers, and 32nd against the tight end. Yeah, yeah. it's just a funny stat when you look yes. at those numbers and then you say, oh, maybe, you know, Nick Chubb, you start him. That's Kareem Hunt, you start him. How you like my foot to your face. Yeah. Frank Gore should have 20 carries. Is he? Would you play him over Edo Smith? I probably would. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't think I would. Championship week. I don't think I would. I. I, I don't want. You know, a, a guaranteed eight or fewer points, and that's what I feel like. He you had get. fifteen last week. Well, I, I. I realize that, but you. You even no, I, I, said I, he falls into the end zone. You know, once or twice a year. That's correct. Uh, he just did it. So I don't I don't think it happens again. And the, and the Browns have been pretty stout against the run. I don't want to rely on Frank Gore. Good example would be like San Francisco. 21 carries in that game, eight fantasy points. Exactly. Well pronounced. Uh, Jarvis Landry, great start. Rashard Higgins, you heard the taking it to 100 pick for Jason. Rashard Higgins, Russell Gage, who do you want? Mm. A lot of silence there. Mm, that was a, that's tough a tough one. one. Uh, I'm going to go Rashard Higgins. I'm going to go Gage. I will lean Higgins. Austin Hooper. He's he's I mean there is no team as bad at tight end as the Jets and I I think Austin Hooper is a is a very good player. I know you want us to say no to some of these middling tight ends. No, he, I say yes. He yeah, scares me. I say yes to Hooper as well. All right. Um Chris Herndon? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's move uh, on to starts. Starts of the week. All right, little break here between the matchups. Get into our starts for this week, and I'll kick it off with a quarterback we've already talked about, a matchup we've already talked about. I am going with my lock of the week, Tom Brady against the Detroit Lions, the single best matchup for quarterbacks in the NFL over the last eight weeks. Huge over under, 53.5 points. Stafford has the ability to keep up in this game. And uh, look, Brady's hard to watch, Jason. Ha watching you watch Brady. Mm, even harder. You watching Brady is a difficult thing. And uh, last week, two players, two wide receivers dragged down on the one-yard line. He would have been the number one overall quarterback if uh, they fall into the end zone after putting up 390 passing yards. So I love Brady this week. I'm going to go. <laughs> the plant, man, I, I absolutely love this call. If you hadn't have done it, I would have, uh, and I'm sure Mike would as well. Tom Brady's a smash play. Mm -hmm. uh, Deshaun Watson is my start of the week. This is a championship week. Start your superstar players. Uh, I, you know, the matchup isn't the the best. You, you, the Bengals are not great, but you end up with low scoring games, slower pace of play, low over under. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I'm trusting Deshaun Watson. I I trust him to be really, really good. He had back-to-back -back number one quarterback performances and then had to play Indianapolis, Chicago, Indianapolis again. Tough defenses where he was still top 10, uh, I believe, last week against Indianapolis. They can't run the ball, but they've started using David Johnson in the passing game. I think the entire offense runs through Deshaun Watson. I will trust him in my championship week. And I'm going with the Rook. I'm taking Jalen Hurts against the Dallas Cowboys. It's all about the rushing, 18 for 106, 11 for 63. And the Dallas Cowboys, on the season, it's kind of a, you know, it's a middle-of-the-road matchup for quarterbacks. But then you look at what type of quarterback play has gotten it done against the Dallas Cowboys. Russell, the quarterback two, Kyler, the quarterback five, and Lamar, the quarterback seven. They clearly have a problem with mortal, mobile core, quarterbacks. Also mortal. Mortal, mortal, mortal quarterbacks. And, uh, him. and that's who Jalen Hurts is. And we've seen enough from the passing game, the arm for Jalen Hurts. He's willing to go downfield. I, I, and I also think that 
I mean, we're not there, but I think Rager is kind of a sneaky start this week. All right, at running back, uh, I got this in early in the week before we knew whether it was going to be Savon Ahmed or Miles Gaskin. So it is Miles Gaskin, the starting running back for Miami, assuming it is Miles Gaskin, which we can fairly assume. Yes. Uh, Las Vegas bleeding out to the running back. You know, this is just a smash play. Um, <laughs> you have Miami running the ball with the amount that they run it, the way they control the game with their defense. We saw Ahmed come right back into the lineup and put up a monstrous game last week, and you have to start the Miami running back. Agreed. Uh, yeah, he, absolutely. I mean, they've just been so good. Whoever whoever it is, if you can know who it is, you know that they're going to be very good, and we know it's the gas man this week. At running back, I'm going with Darnell Anderson. Darnell Anderson. Darnell, uh, a.k.a. Daryl Henderson, my favorite nickname. <laughs> Because it's not uh, against How much Seattle. of it do you like that nickname just because Mike hates it? I would say 50-50. Okay. Pro probably a large chunk. Um, but look, uh, Daryl Henderson um, mm -hmm. was a solid running back. When Cam Akers went down in week two and didn't get back into real action until week eight, he was like 4% of snaps and uh, some of those games where he was technically active. When it was Henderson's show... He was good. He was averaging 86 yards and three quarters of a touchdown per game. He was the running back 13 through that six-week stretch. He had half of those games as an RB1. Um, it's a slight plus matchup. The The Seahawks aren't uh, great or terrible, but usually they, they give up a little bit more. And if you're one of those teams that lost Mostert, lost CMC or Gibson, I'm not saying that Daryl Henderson is like a, a must start as my start of the week. I'm saying here's a guy that you can start, mm -hmm. uh, and and I think he's going to be an absolute fine player this week. If if you would lost you, running, would backs. you say he's your start of the week? Yes. I mean, I'm not going with fine. like an Edo Smith, mighty fine start of the week. My mighty fine <laughs> start of the week, but I I do think he's going to have a solid game. Yeah, and Henderson might have been on your waiver wire this week. This player also may have been on your waiver wire. I'm going with Leonard Fournette. Big brother. Oh. Big brother Leonard Fournette. No Ronald Jones. How's that feel? Leonard Fournette's your championship week start of the week. How's that feel? It feels like fantasy football is what it feels yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. No Ronald Jones. That turned into 19 opportunities, including five carries in the red zone and two goal line carries. Andy already outlined why the, the matchup was great for Tom Brady. You know, the, the, the over-under, all that stuff carries over to Leonard Fournette as well. And over the last eight weeks... Not only have the Detroit Lions been terrible against the quarterback, they've also been terrible against the running back position. So Leonard Fournette is a strong running back to play for me this week. All right, my wide receiver start of the week. Very excited about Marvin Jones Jr. I'm trying to look a little bit deeper here than the cream of the crop at the wide receiver position. Marvin Jones has been really, really good. And Tampa Bay has been struggling the last four weeks against they opposing have. fantasy wide receivers. Look, Marvin Jones has two top five finishes in the last three weeks. Top five at the wide receiver position. He has four wide receiver one finishes in the last eight weeks. Huge over-under. Stafford seems locked in on Marvin Jones. 12 targets three times in the last four weeks. And over the last six games, I just wanted to illustrate his pace. He's on 106 reception, 1,250-yard, eight-touchdown pace. Mm. Uh, if there was ever time for a Marv pick, you go Marv for... Christmas, Marvin, uh, Christmas Jones. Yeah, and I'm going. I'm going to the top. <laughs> I'm going with Allen Robinson as a smash start yeah. this week, despite the fact that he was the wide receiver 33 and 44 two of the last three weeks. This he's also been the wide receiver four, the wide receiver five in two of his last four. He, he's, you know, it. He has big games and he has disappeared. This one is going to be a monster game. Uh, the matchup is as good as it gets against Jacksonville. I think Mitchell Trubisky is not someone that I want to start in any kind of single quarterback league, but he's he's a good option. If you're in a two-quarterback league, I would start him because I think Allen Robinson definitely gets a touchdown this week. And I'm going with Manny Sanders. I like the matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. Michael Thomas, again, is out because he is on the injured reserve. Last week, four for 76 in that first game with Drew Brees. That's, look, that's not amazing, but four for 76 – for a waiver wire player, it's not terrible at all. And now you have an even better matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. And you have that second game back for Drew Brees to find his feet. I think that Manuel Sanders is in play. Did you just call him Manuel? Did I? Did I drop I the E? I don't know. I thought you Whatever. dropped the E. Uh, Whatever. You dropped Manny. the E. 
you drop the H for for her. You're trying to be more efficient. Man, Man Sanders. Man Sanders. <laughs> man San. Yeah, Man San. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my tight end start of the week. I'm going back to Tyler Higby this week against Seattle. All right. Um, Seattle has struggled against the tight end position. They are the fifth best matchup over the last five weeks. Higby has hit 80 plus percent of snaps for three straight weeks. Had a touchdown. Had his highest yardage mark of the year last year. He came on at the end of last season as well. Look, Cam Akers is going to be out. They were willing to give Cam Akers, what, 29 carries in a game. I think they're going to have to rely more on the passing attack in this one. Uh, as much as I like Daryl, I don't think they're going to give him the kind of workload that that Cam Akers was getting because Cam Akers was doing a lot with it. And um, you're looking for your best tight end chance or uh, touchdown, touchdown chance at tight end. And I think Higby has a great shot at another one. I'm going with Austin Hooper. I know you said, Andy, you were concerned. I am 100% not concerned with Austin Hooper. He had been banged up. He missed mm -hmm. three of seven games. He lost with, his appendix. With two different injuries. He had the appendix injury. He also missed a game with a neck injury. And then before that were the weather games. So, obviously, he hasn't had a great season. Uh, last week, he was good. He was a top-10 guy, got a touchdown. But the matchup against the Jets is uh, it's the best out there, but it's better than the best. Uh, over the course of the season, they're giving up 3.6 more fantasy points than a team's average at tight end. Uh, the second best is a point less than that at 2.6 more than average. But over the last five weeks, they're giving up an extra 8.4 fantasy points per week against tight ends. They are an absolute sieve. Think about Higby last week, got a touchdown against them. Disley got a touchdown the week prior. That was the team that That's Darren all I needed to hear. <laughs> Oh, Will Disley got a touchdown. Oh, I wish you could play the Jets every week. We'd have a lot more of those drops. Uh, you remember Darren Waller's big, ridiculous game? I do. Uh, that was against the Jets. Gesicki had his best game of the season the week right before that. Hunter Henry, I mean, this is like, yeah. if you're a tight end and you play the Jets, you have a monster game. So I, I would start Hunt, uh, Austin Hooper. And I want to highlight Dallas Goddard uh, to go along with Jalen Hurts. The, the, it brings me great pain. Because I am probably playing against him in the championship week, and I think that he is a, a fine play over the last five games. Dallas has not been a plus matchup for the tight end, but but we have seen uh, Dallas Goddard as the number one target so far for Jalen Hurts. Small sample size, I get it, but 21% of the targets are going to Dallas Goddard, and that's what you want at the position. You want the volume, and for a team to have the, the number one option right now being a tight end, I'm playing Dallas Goddard. All right. That does it for our starts of the week. Uh, we do have, you know, a very important segment. Mm -hmm. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom kicker of the week. Oh, this is the week you're at war like it's the Gaza Strip. You know you need my man, Rodrigo Blankenship. I like a good Gaza Strip we're, reference. We're, we're bringing in geopolitical wars. <laughs> Apparently we are. <laughs> Apparently. Brooks. Uh, Jason. I don't know how I, I mean, felt about Jason's that one. Jason's face I, tells, I was, this, tells this tale. He was not happy with that one, but he did it anyways. <laughs> That's, uh, I, you, you seem... I, I felt seen, Mike. Well, you... Mike, what else could possibly rhyme with the word ship? Look, I, I had another you good one, but you said it was inappropriate. <laughs> Rocket ship? Oh, no, man. No, we would have had to bleep whatever he said before. <laughs> uh, Brooks really likes a good Gaza Strip joke, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. About time. Straight so from the papers. <laughs> Gaza Strip. <laughs> Fantasy Forecast. All right, don't go anywhere. I mean, we have 10 more matchups to get into. You guys Ooh. ready to rumble? I am ready. There's one I'm excited to get to. I can't wait to find out which one. <laughs> All right, the Indianapolis Colts are... Is it this one? ...are 10 and 4. Not this one. Uh -oh. They're taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers at 11 and 3. Colts are two-point favorites. It's a 44.5 point over under. That is low. And we know what's been going on. Pittsburgh's offense has struggled. And uh, if you thought Drew Brees' end was there, you certainly thought it about Big Ben on Monday night. Um, 
you're not – it's championship week. You're not going to take your shot with Big Ben here. Correct. No way. Uh, I don't think you're going to take your shot with Phil Rivers either. Not me, not ever. James Conner, you're not going to play James Conner. Correct, if he even plays. Jonathan Taylor? Yes, please. You're going to play Jonathan Taylor. I do want to highlight this. Jonathan Taylor, he's been great, right, the last four weeks or so. This has been uh, – the stats back this up. He wasn't good. <laughs> now he's good. Yes. If that makes it was, sense. It was just volume at the beginning of the year, and now he's getting volume – and he's playing well. And you understand the system better, yeah. the scheme. And the matchups have been better. Through the first 11 weeks, he forced 12 missed tackles. He was 92nd in football in yards after contact. In the last four weeks, he has 18 missed tackles and 10th in yards after contact. There so, we go. Huge jump. There we go. Maturation of Jonathan Taylor, trust by the team, better matchups. Everything's come together. Yeah, the matchups do play a key role it's a lot easier to break tackles force missed tackles and have yards after contact when you're not playing against the Steelers when you're playing against teams like Detroit and uh, you know Green Bay's run defense uh, so uh, you know this is this isn't a plus matchup uh, but the Steelers are very banged up right now yeah it, it's th th I'm perfectly fine with this matchup I love Jonathan Taylor here and what, the last like gushing over over uh, JT here JTT you know he's caught 35 of 38 targets like that's that's a fantastic number for for any running back and let alone Jonathan Taylor who's wasn't you know he didn't profile as a, as a pass catching running back yeah no he's he's an excellent pass catcher we I saw that at the combine I mean you saw that whenever he had to catch the ball it just wasn't the offense he was in in college and he's been productive with his right. receptions very confident in Deontay Johnson this week he was the go-to receiver last week, came through in a big way. The last five weeks, Indianapolis has given it up in the secondary. Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, Kiki QT, and, and Mbop, mm -hmm. and uh, Nelson Aguilar all had big weeks against this secondary. Uh, it's actually been pretty bad over the last six weeks in terms of fantasy points given up to quarterback, running back, tight end. This is where you have to make a little bit of a mental adjustment and not run away from that matchup for Deontay Johnson. And there is upside for... Chase Claypool and Juju, there is the possibility that they get things figured out this week in a, in a, in a way that you wouldn't expect with what the matchup has looked like throughout the year. Right. Uh, I would expect more that could be done for Claypool just because I, I think he can make more on his own, uh, you know, on a deep play or even a handoff that he, he uses his incredible speed to get past people. I, I don't see big things for Juju. Juju's going to stop dancing on the logos. Did you know that? Yeah, I, I heard. So they they that we did it. We solved the problem. Yep. The Pittsburgh, yeah, all of their problems were because Juju was dancing, disrespecting other people's logos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, T. Y. Hilton, he's at our wide receiver thirty on the week. So this is not T. Y. Houston. No, this is T. Y. What do we do? Yeah, I mean he. He's really one of those nebulous wide receivers where he's had a good run. He's had four solid games in a row. Um, they were all plus matchups, though, and now you've got a difficult matchup, but he's been involved. He's looked good, and so he's uh, he's someone that you can start. I think he's in that conversation like we were talking about earlier with the Russell Gages. Uh, you know, Russell Gage in a better matchup or T.Y. Hilton here, Andy? Um. I'm going to go with Russell Gage. I think I lean that way as well. Yeah. It, it let, makes... me, let me blitz them real quick. Hilton or Juju? Hilton. Hilton. Hollywood Brown or Hilton? Ooh. Hollywood's against the Giants. Bradbury, yeah. Bradbury should be back. Uh, Bradbury doesn't. I guess it'll go Hilton. Yeah, I, man. Yeah, I guess it's Q Hilton. QT? If he's active, I would go QT. Robbie Anderson? Robbie. Robbie. All right, uh, Eric Ebron has been limited, um, or actually didn't practice on Wednesday. Right. I'm not sure if he returned to a limited fashion today. No, he was held out of practice on Wednesday. That's the last report I have. Um, let's move on. The Bears, 7-7, seven and seven, taking on the 1-13 Jacksonville Trevor Lawrences. Uh, the Bears are seven-point favorites. It's a 47-point over-under. Tell me what to do with Jacksonville, if anything. Uh, uh, stay away. Yeah, they, 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 if, 
I James Robinson, I I get it. He's saying he wants to play. If he's active on game day, I have no problem playing him. Really? None. If he misses the entire week of practice with that ankle injury and he starts, you're I don't have a problem playing him, no. Man, I have a big problem playing him. Jason, where are you? I'm the Goldilocks here. I'm I'm in the middle. I, I have a problem playing him, but I do think that if he is active, he's going to get the work. Uh, I don't think he'll be as effective because he's got an, in, an injured ankle. There's also the risk that we've seen with several players. Think about Raheem Mostert. That's exactly he, why. That, that's my problem. It's not that if he plays, he's, he's the starting running back, but the, an ankle problem – we see it all the time, limiting how effective a player is. They just keep getting knocked out. I will give you an example of what I will do on Sunday. All right. If James Robinson is active and starting after what Doug Marone said and what's on the line for Jacksonville, and I will put him out there over T.Y. Hilton. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would put him out there over Robbie Anderson. Either one of those guys. For me, personally. Okay. And, and I can see that. I think that's lower. At running back... You know, I would I would put him ahead of all the Wayne Gallmans, Devin Singletary's, Sony Michelle's, Edo Smith, Frank Gore. Yeah, yeah, I would put him ahead of them. But you know, the the uh, other upper tier, and I would you know like uh, Daryl Henderson. If I've got an option like that that I think is just solid, I will go with what I think is a safer play. Do you want to um, say any final words, Mike, to Gardner as his career comes to a close? Uh, I don't think his career will be closed. But he's meant a lot to you. Oh, I love Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew is good for the NFL. Unfortunately, Gardner Minshew is not good in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Well so, said. short, concise, accurate. Short like his shorts. Yeah. Um, he wears short <laughs> shorts. <laughs> short jorts, Jason. Oh, short jorts. It's right there. If James Robinson's out, are you tempted by a Goomba Walla or a Zigbo? No way. No. No, thank you. No. Say no to O. Say, yeah. say They're no. playing the Bears. Yeah. Well, the, bear, I mean, the Bears have been better th or worse than, than you think over the last six weeks. The last six weeks be on the season. And also, they're the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right. All right. Uh, Allen Robinson, yes, you are always starting Allen Robinson. David Montgomery, Hold yes, on. he is going to win you your league. He had 32 carries last week. 32. He had for 146 yards. Jacksonville's allowing the third most rushing yards, fourth highest yards before contact, and he is cruising along. Mm -hmm. The uh, David Montgomery on the field and Jonathan Taylor on the field story has really changed over the last few weeks. It really has. Yeah, the the Bears offense has has been better with Mitchell Trubisky and David Montgomery has been a huge <laughs> beneficiary of the threat of Mitchell's mobility. I don't even know if Cordero, Cordero Patterson will be active in this game. Mm. Montgomery could push 30 again. Very, oh, for very sure. Very easily. And they could win by 30. All right, the New York Giants, 5-9, and nine, taking on the 9-5 and five Baltimore Ravens. Oh, Ravens 11. I know what that is. 11 point, uh, That's a palindrome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jason. We already had one earlier. I was really disappointed. I missed it? You did. Oh, what a loser. Yeah, palindrome. dumb. All right, Ravens. Yeah, I deserve that. Minus 11. 45 point over under. I think uh, this matchup is very, very interesting because the Giants' defense has been good. Eighth against fantasy quarterbacks over the last six weeks. Second against fantasy wide receivers, lowering that Hollywood Brown hope. And what do you do and where do you slot in Lamar Jackson for championship week? I know he's your quarterback, Mike. Yep. Yeah, he is a top five quarterback this week. Lamar Jackson is a is a different guy. I get that the Giants have been pretty stout in their in terms of their defense against fantasy quarterbacks, but the number that I like if when I'm for starting Lamar Jackson in the last six weeks, twenty third against tight ends. Yeah, I don't really care about their wide receiver number because that's not how Lamar Jackson that's not his number one target. Mandrews. Mark Mandrews is the number one target. So Lamar Jackson is fine. It really feels like they have figured some things out the last couple weeks, including stop giving the ball to Mark Ingram. That is a positive thing for your football team. Lamar Jackson just looks far more comfortable on the field. He doesn't look as frazzled the last month. So I'm playing Lamar with 
full confidence in my championship week. Lamar Jackson was almost my Grinch. He's not, he's not my full Grinch because he could ex- you know, he can obviously explode, but the New York Giants defense has not been good against quarterbacks. They've been great against quarterbacks recently uh in the whole year really. Yeah, I mean they've been yes, solid the they- whole year, but it, you know, the fantasy points uh, above the opponent's average, if you look at that number over the last five weeks, it's outlandish. They're, they are negative 12.7 points fewer than what that team's average is. That's what they've been giving up. And during that stretch, Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, mobile quarterbacks. I mean, th- this is this is not a good matchup for Lamar Jackson, who has been better recently but mediocre on the year. And I don't think he's a lock to be a top five quarterback this week. It feels like you two could possibly make some sort of water bet on Lamar Jackson this week based on the confidence level of Mike and your your lack of confidence. Uh, all right. How about you said he's a top five. I'll go top eight outside the top I'll take eight the top quarterbacks. Eight, yeah. Water bet. I, that's very generous for Jason. I honest. know. I was, you got nice odds there, Mike. I would, have, I would have taken seven. Yeah. But I would not have accepted six. Okay. It's good to know that now. Um Andrews is the must start. J.K. Dobbins should see 15 plus touches. You know, it's not a smash top 12 type of week for him, I don't think, but I think he's very safe. Gus Edwards is a, a desperation play. You got to be desperate. I'd, I, I'd rather play Chase Edmonds than Gus Edwards. Wayne Gallman, after last week, do you have any possible way that you want to put him on out there? It's really tough. I mean, it, seeing a lot of Alfred Morris, seeing some Deion Lewis. It's like he ran out of steam. He was, you know, a, t- a top twenty-four back. Jason, do you understand how tiring it is to fight crime at night and be an NFL player? Yeah, I. I when think, does he even sleep? I exactly. Think that, yeah, that can work for about six weeks. Yeah, and then you run out, and you need you. He's yeah. We're, the opportunity, yeah. The opportunities are going down. <laughs> the opportunities are going down for Wayne Gallman. I don't want to play him this week against against Baltimore. Even though Baltimore is beat up, I'm not doing it. Um, can you flex anybody? I, I don't, on the New York side. I don't think so. Um, when I look, well, let's not then. Yeah, let's let's. I agree. No, no <laughs> is the answer here because the quarterback situation is bad. What I, about Pro Bowler Evan Ingram? Ridiculous. Ridiculous that he's a Pro Bowler or ridiculous playing him championship week? Yes and both. That is – no, I I mean, I'm not rolling with Evan Ingram personally. The Cincinnati Bengals at 3-10-1 taking on the 4-10 Houston Texans. Texans are 8.5 point favorites. Um, They have met with Marvin Lewis to interview for the head coaching role for Houston. Uh, Of course, I'm a Marvin Lewis fan. Yeah. Of course, you would think that. He, he did some good work at Arizona State after he left the NFL. Uh, obviously, never got over the hump with Cincinnati, but also was never at the bottom of the pile. And I guess that's kind of where where you're at with Marvin Lewis. Mm. Um, I'd still prefer Marvin Jones over Marvin Lewis. This week? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Jason brought up Deshaun Monson. I like Deshaun Watson more than I like Jalen Hurts this week, so I'm on board with Deshaun Watson. David Johnson, the wide receiver who plays running back for mm-hmm. Houston, is a good start this week as well. We've we've kind of talked through a lot of these options on this team between starts of the week and then what's going on with Kiki QT and, and Hanson. So Brandon Cooks, um, pff, ew, this is a little ominous. So over the last five games, he's averaging 6.6 targets and 66.6 <laughs> yards. Uh-oh. So be warned. Those aren't the beastly numbers you're looking for, um, uh, but you're, but he's still the he's still the number one um, target here. The, the the number one option that I would play from. We're talking about okay, we would play Kiki QT, we'd play mm, Bop, mm-hmm. but those guys are behind Brandon Cooks. Yes. Brandon Cooks is is the play, and I think you know he could have a good week against Cincinnati, who gives up uh a, you know a good chunk of big plays. They do third most twenty plus yard pass plays in football. On the other side. They're going to be without Tyler Boyd. He did not practice. He was concussed. I think he misses this week. That doesn't do much for you. Um, Houston is a pretty bad defense. R- Gio Bernard is in consideration yes, here after he last is. week's performance, so I think he's a start right on the fringe running back 2-3 zone. 
Yeah, and I I think we should throw T. Higgins' name into the mix of, you know, we, we've been talking about a lot of players that you might take a shot on. The Texans' defense has been so bad, and while the quarterback plays terrible in Cincy, if Tyler Boyd is gone, you're just going to have 8, 9, 10 plus targets to T. Higgins. And I, I you know, I, I think he's a talented enough human to make some make something happen. Yeah, I mean I don't want to play T. Higgins, I mean, but in a pinch. Did Ryan, yeah. I don't know. Man. Finley barely threw the ball. Ryan Finley had eighty nine yards. <laughs> That's why there's no game line in Vegas for this one. Is because you yesterday you're like, is there really much of a difference between Ryan Finley and Brandon Allen? Yes. And I think there's a very big difference. Ryan Finley is it's like he's Daniel Jones with out the ability to pass at all but they had the opportunity to play that way and they were shutting down the Steelers who everyone is shutting down the Steelers I just don't think that the happens the opportunity this week. to play that way they had the op the only option was to play that way I mean no opportunity I mean, Ryan you know, Finley has maxed out at 13 pass attempts this year that I think that shuts it down Brandon Allen threw the ball a lot and they they could let him throw the ball. So yeah. I think I think if Brandon Allen starts, I'm with you. I would go. I would even consider AJ Green in that situation. I don't now know. Brandon Allen is not. I don't think he practiced. Start. Yeah, he's not. So maybe then we. Why are right. we talking about Bengals starts on <laughs> Championship Week? I don't know. Pass no. attempts for Brandon Allen for what it's worth: twenty nine, nineteen, thirty six. So uh, running quarterback, passing quarterback. Uh, anyone else? Let's move on. Denver five and nine. Chargers five and nine. Oh man, who's going to get to six wins? I don't I, know. Who I it don't is. know. Chargers three point favorites, forty nine point over under. Denver won in week eight, thirty one to thirty. So big time week in terms of production points. Denver won on the KJ Hamler touchdown as time expired due to the Chargers failing to manage the clock, which is their kind of thing. Yeah. Uh. Pace of play wise, the Chargers are number one in plays per game. Denver's eighth in pace of play. That provides a lot of opportunity for fantasy. Justin Herbert, you guys are very confident in this week. Yes. Yeah. If I had Herbert, would you would you play Herbert over Lamar? I would play Herbert over Lamar. Yes. Okay. Drew Locke still irresponsible. Yeah. Forever. What's he getting for Christmas, Cole? Uh, I mean, he'll probably spend way above his budget. Like. He you know, he's not responsible. He's going to max with the out money. them yeah. credit cards for sure. For himself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. This doesn't feel nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Herbert, confident. Austin Eckler, um, confident? Oh, yeah. E extremely confident. He's He's been targeted so heavily, and, you know, the the matchup is great against the Broncos. They've, they're they 29th against the run over the last six weeks. Austin Eckler is, uh, you know, guaranteed in my lineup. Obviously, there's a little bit of worry from his utilization last week with the injury and you're like ah oh, you wanted to see him more but I haven't heard any negative things about you know right. his health right now so I am personally confident let, let me blow your mind for a second with the running back on the other side of the ball Melvin Gordon over the last three weeks is a 6.7 per carry runner Melvin Gordon is over the last three weeks a 1386 and 10 running back pace Melvin Gordon is somebody I'm actually afraid to be playing in championship week this week. Afraid to be playing against. To be playing against. Yeah, I, th that I, is think, correct. I think he is a good play. Uh, he's he's a solid option. And, and you know, we And talk it's a about, revenge game. I was going to say, we talk about, you know, well, stupid revenge had it, but narratives. He, but, but at the same time, he came to this team so that he could play against them I know, and, and he sucked against them last time. So now he needs what? He's just on fire right he now. He needs more revenge. <laughs> 8.7 per carry, 5.2, 5.5. He's looked good the last few weeks. I remember that touchdown uh, run. I, th I think it was this past week where it was just, you know, they were from the six or seven yard line. They give him, uh, I think it was like a draw, and he just smashed his way in. Gordon's yeah. been good. He's had a he's had a good year. He really has. He's turned it around. He's the RB 17 on the season, and he was the RB 23 last year in Los Angeles, and he jumped up to 4.7 a carry on the year. So, interesting. Keenan Allen did not practice on Wednesday. Mike, stress check. Uh, as long as he doesn't practice, the, the stress will be at zero because then I don't have to worry about it. So, if he doesn't practice and he's active, you're not playing Keenan Allen. Correct. Okay. But it, today, it, we, we don't have the report yet from today, but today and tomorrow are the really big ones. If 
If Keenan Allen practices in full, then you have a really, really tough decision to make. If he is limited in practice, I'm probably just going to pivot to someone else like T.Y. Hilton on my team. I don't see a scenario myself where I would play Keenan Allen this week. But you brought it up. If he had full practices, yeah. then maybe. But I am not excited about it. Yeah, what we saw last week Because he was... could go out in one play. Exactly. But, but So that that's where it's bizarre to me that you're so confident in James Robinson who has, is a running back with an ankle problem. Sure. But you're completely hands-off of Keenan Allen. Yeah, because Keenan's – he left early last week and didn't look good on the field last week. Well, to be fair, he d didn't leave early. He just didn't really play much. He okay. was still there. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what we're debating at this <laughs> point. It's a matter of Keenan has come out of games injured twice this year. Sure. Um, didn't look right to me. Yeah, he that was that was the other issue. It wasn't just when he wasn't on the field. When he was on the field, it was like that's not a Keenan Allen route. That was right. that's like what I would do. Yeah. And the J the James Robinson thing has to do with he's been extremely resilient and with high volume all year long and wasn't placed on IR, wasn't said that he has a high ankle sprain that's going to keep sure. him out. And um I don't think they have another option. So, here well, they they got a Goomba Wale. Like I said. Yeah, for Keenan Allen though, it the game. Do remember the game was on Thursday, so they had the it was like the the mini bye week, sure. so to speak, for Keenan Allen. So my policy right now is if I see some full practices from Keenan Allen, and we'll see what the what the coaches are saying. If the coach says snap count again, I'm gonna take him for his word this time and and bail. If Keenan is out, are you taking a shot on Tyron Johnson or Mike Williams, <sighs> or even man Jalen Guyton? I mean, I know Tyron Johnson, he had a, a big fantasy game, but it was on five targets, and uh, I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so. The problem is, is if you like Herbert no matter what, and Keenan is out, how does he produce? Hunter Henry out with an illness. It's not going to be all hen Henry. Maybe 50 yards is Henry. Well, you could, It's like it's going to be Johnson. It's going to be Guyton. Yeah, I mean, the, these guys will be involved. It'll also be Austin Eckler. Eckler will right. end up with – you know, 100 receiving yards um, if he's out there. So I, I do think you could take a shot on Tyron Johnson and on Mike Williams, who's, you know, getting back from his own injury if he's out there. Tim Patrick? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine <laughs> with Tim Patrick. I am. Uh, I, I'm not going to allow – I'm not going to allow, um, you know, a, a small sample to deviate. He is the number one wide receiver mm -hmm. for this team. The matchup on the other side of the ball is not the scariest matchup. So I think Tim Patrick can be in your lineup. Noah Fant, we say yes to Noah. After 11 targets, eight receptions, I think you have to. Yeah, that was a whiff last week. Mm -hmm. He's real annoying. Because <laughs> when you want him and believe in him, he's let you down and then he has these breakout games and has high target totals. 11 targets is enough to – it's kind of like your Logan Thomas situation last week. You didn't have confidence, but then the targets came. And mm -hmm. um, all right, the Carolina Panthers at four and ten take on the six and eight Washington football team. Uh, Washington two and a half point favorites, forty four and a half point over under. Uh, Ron Rivera gets to reunite against Carolina in this game with a lot on the line. And we don't know if it's going to be Alex Smith limited on Wednesday or Dwayne Haskins, but limited indefinitely. Who? Dwayne Haskins. Oh, okay. I thought you were the making talent. A, yeah, talent. I you were being mean to Alex Smith. I was like, I don't. I won't stand for that. Oh no, no, no. Um, Teddy Bridgewater has not looked good. Yeah, this team actually hasn't looked really good on offense for a little while. In fact, yeah, what uh, happened? There's there's a player in this game. Uh oh, Mr. Grinch. A Grinch sighting. There's a Grinch sighting. Mike Davis is Mike Grinch ah. for this. Week Mike Davis, yes, he's the RB10 on the year and had a great start to the season, but Washington is a tough, tough matchup, and uh, only two running backs have caught more than three passes in a game against Washington this year. If you don't get Mike Davis in the end zone, you're going to be pretty, pretty disappointed. Um, obviously got in the end zone a couple weeks ago, made Jason sad, but over from week seven on, let me just illustrate a couple things here. From week seven on, despite Mike Davis having a lot more snaps than Damian Harris, Harris has had more yards per game, 
more top 24 finishes, and the same amount of fantasy points as Mike Davis. It has slowed down tremendously, and I just don't trust him outside of RB3 range against Washington's defense, which is sixth against opposing fantasy running backs. So I love it. I'm in. <laughs> You're in on the Grinch? I'm in on the Grinch. I mean, is that, is that punitive? Uh, there's There's got to be at least 10% punitive damages here, but the reality is <laughs> Mike, the process. It was your fault. It was not Mike Davis's fault. It was Mike, Mike Davis Mike didn't Davis's force fault. himself into the lineup, Mike. Yeah, he needs With to. With a previous performance to just make it overwhelming for Jason to reject him. Yeah, I, uh, you know, Mike Davis gets a lot of his volume from the passing work. That's what's happened this year. And as Andy illustrated, that doesn't happen much against the Washington football team. So I'm out. Pretty hesitant about the upside for all three wide receivers in Carolina, too, to be honest. DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel. This feels like the same situation as Tampa's three wide receivers, only the matchup stinks and their matchup is Detroit. Right. It's com so opposite. Right, Opposite. but where where all three of them could absolutely – one of them could have a big game, two of them could be okay, all three could stink. Yeah, and I, I lean towards all three stinking because uh, the Washington football team has been great and Teddy Bridgewater has not been really great. Uh, you know, he's he's okay on yardage. He's throwing, you know, 250, 280 the last several weeks. Just doesn't look good. But he doesn't look good. Their owner came out and – literally said that, you know, the unless you have a quarterback that is, you know, uh, taking you to a Super Bowl, that position is always a position of need. When your owner says that, that's yeah. like writing is on the yeah. wall, Teddy. You are not our future. And, and Robbie Anderson, I want to play somebody else. I really do. I don't want to play him this week. Uh, he is riding on the laurels of the beginning of the year. Weeks one through five, he was the wide receiver eight. Since then, he's the wide receiver 39. That is a position that you can – put a Russell Gage in or put somebody else in that you feel more confident in. I was burned by not doing it last week when I had my instincts told me, sit him down. Yep. And uh, my, my only piece here for uh, there is negativity and I, I don't disagree with you guys, but DJ Moore is, you have to play DJ Moore to me. I'm, there's no way I'm benching him. Why? Because DJ Moore, the, the upside every, every single week, DJ Moore has that. I'm saying, like, what? Okay, let, let's let's do some start sits then. Let's see how down you are on uh, DJ Moore and, and the, the Panthers as a whole. So DJ Moore or, let's see, uh, Manuel Sanders against Minnesota. Mm. DJ Moore. Yeah, I'd probably go DJ Moore there. DJ Moore or Cooper Cup against Seattle. Cooper Cup. Um, right, pretty even there. Yeah, okay. and then uh, DJ Moore or Antonio Brown. I would go Antonio Brown. I would play DJ Moore. Okay, so, so I he's guess in a lot of lineups. I think yeah, Jason maybe a little lower than than me. Terry McLaurin in this matchup or DJ Moore. Wow. Uh <laughs> I think I would play DJ Moore. Moore was 6 that for 131. Brutal. The point with Moore, I think, is that you're going to get bigger plays. Right. And if you're trying to find some optimism against Washington in a low over under, the bigger plays are going to matter. And DJ Moore seems to be coming down with those. So I would put him higher than the rest for sure. And I would take McClure in there. Yeah. I think I would take McClure in there. I hope we get Alex Smith. I really do. Uh, will we get Antonio Gibson? I still doubt it. Are you playing him if he plays? Against Carolina? Um, I would not. Per not. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, you this know. This game is rough. The, it is. It is really tough is decisions in this one. Yeah, it's just a matter of how you expect this game to go, and I don't expect good things. I think I would take the under on this, a defensive, yucky offense yeah. type of game. So I don't really want pieces here. Um, and I expect Dwayne Haskins to be the starter, which, you know, we've, we've talked about this. That hurts the Carolina <laughs> side as well. Oh, that was just for Haskins. <laughs> sure, absolutely. I think we. that's just uh, all three of us. Logan yeah. Thomas, you're going to play him? Stay in the flames. And if you're for tight end, yes. Okay. And then if uh, if Antonio Gibson's out, JD McKissick. Yep. Yeah. That that's what I was going to bring up is that Gibson's biggest 
entry to this game is ruining J.D. McKissick's standalone value if Gibson is active. Philadelphia Eagles, 4-9-1 and one against the 5-9 and nine Dallas Cowboys. Eagles are two-point favorites, 49.5 point over under. A game of great intrigue to uh, everybody because of Jalen Hurts. Because of the Jalen Hurts end-of-season storyline, mm-hmm. Mike is as on board with Jalen Hurts as a, as a person can get, and I understand it. I am more hesitant. My hesitation would have cost me with Justin Herbert at the beginning of the year. I would have expected, you know, a down game here or there. This is a divisional matchup. The line is close. I mean, it's a it's a two point line. It's a forty nine and a half point over under, and so I I have no problem starting Jalen Hurts. I think you you should start him. He's in the top eight, seven or eight uh, this week, but I still like some. If I'm going into this week, I like Deshaun Watson more. I like Tom Brady more. I like I'd probably go Justin Herbert over Jalen Hurts as well. Yeah, I mean he, th- that that's the grouping that he's in. You, you haven't seen enough from him. It would really hurt what, if he let you down. What it you would. saw was a number one forty point fantasy week. So that recency bias is is saying we know the upside is outlandishly high. Um, he just got you to this matchup, so you're going to stay in the flames of last week, but I do think the expectations need to be adjusted. You're not going to have Kyler Murray throwing for 406 yards and a ton of touchdowns and have this crazy high-scoring game. That's not my expectation for this matchup because the Eagles' defense is good enough uh, to slow down the Cowboys' offense. Miles Sanders' confidence this week. Uh, he had 100% of the carries last week, 95% of the running back opportunities, and Dallas has been bad against running yeah, backs. It's sky high for Miles. That's got to be nice for you, Mike. Yeah. It's 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 about time. <laughs> if you made it this far with Miles Sanders, it is a Christmas miracle to finally have a game where you actually feel confident playing him instead of just like, Okay, I'm starting Miles Sanders again. Here we go. Now, where I don't have any confidence is trying to wade through the wide receiver situation in Philadelphia. You mentioned some interest in Jalen Rager. Look, Greg Ward has been heavily targeted. The tight ends have been heavily targeted. Alshon Jeffrey saw a bunch of targets that got pass interfered on last week. Deshaun Jackson could be activated. Travis Fulgham's on the field. I think that's eight options if you include uh, Miles Sanders, and that just doesn't give me any sort of confidence. Right. I'm saying my Jalen Rager confidence is I don't really want to start him in an, in a regular league. I'm just saying he's a sneaky start that I'm, I'm paying attention to. Like maybe just you throw him in a DFS lineup. Uh, on the other side, Amari Cooper, what happened last week? One for five against Philly in week eight, and then last week kind of disappeared. I yeah, mean, it, it's uh, the targets. Happened? Yeah, the targets uh, went down. The snaps went down. It was uh, not what we had expected. Not what we had come to uh, get used to from you know Andy Dalton looking his way first. That being said, we've talked about this the whole year. Wide receivers are inconsistent. All wide receivers are inconsistent, uh, in, except your Tyree Kill and Devontae Adams types. Uh, they they have games where they have fewer targets. I still put Amari Cooper at the front of this group, and that's who I would start first. Yeah, Michael Gallup might not even be out there, so that will really mm-hmm. help the C.D. Lamb, Amari Cooper situation. I think Dallas wins the game. I'm just going to say that. All right. So, The Rams, 9-5. and five. The Seahawks, 10-4. and four. Oh, well, I guess real quick, Zeke, if Zeke is active, how are you handling that? I mean, it, it's a tough run, D, so I, I, I think I would put Zeke as a – uh, middle to low end running back two. Okay. Yeah. I play Melvin Gordon ahead of him, but uh, he he's certainly someone that you can and probably need to start if he is active. Rams, Seahawks, Seahawks, one point favorites, 47 and a half point over under. NFC West at stake. Uh, My goodness, the Rams, that really hurt them to lose last week. <laughs> they, it really hurt the Jets and it really hurt the Rams. They should not have done that. They should have tried to win. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Rams did beat the Seahawks 23-16 to in Week 10. Look, Russell Wilson right now is a player that I don't Mr. think you can start. Hitch. I would agree. There we go. Russell there we go. Wilson is your Grinch. my Russell Grinch. Wilson. And we're going to play a game. I want to play a game. 
You must be so happy, Mike. Uh, I, I just I like these games. This game is called Russell Wilson or Andy Dalton. <laughs> Russell yes. Wilson or Andy Dalton? Yes. Over the last six weeks, and keep in mind, uh, Dalton only has five games in the last six Did weeks. Did you just say six weeks? Yes. Uh, oh, my. I mean, you know, that's that's about what Dalton's <laughs> got. Uh, over the last six weeks, who has more fantasy points per game, Russell Wilson or Andy Dalton? I'm, I'm, it has to be Russ, right? No, put me on the – I don't care. I don't, Andy Dalton. It is Andy yes. Dalton has more fantasy points yes. per game than Russell Wilson. <laughs> Passing yards per game, Andy Dalton or Russell Wilson? Andy Dalton. Yeah, I'll go Andy Dalton. It's a tie. Oh, it's a tie. They're, okay. they're both throwing for 219. That Look, that's a win for Andy Dalton. Yeah. How about this? Total passing touchdowns. That's Andy Dalton. Well, it, he only has five games. Oh, no. Russ has six games. Oh, no. <laughs> Andy oh, Dalton. No. And it's Andy Dalton <laughs> with 10 versus 9. That is correct. Uh, and the final one here, what? quarterback rating on deep passes. Now, I'm going to give you the quarterback ratings. Mr. Moonball. And Mr. Moonball. And, I, and you tell me which one goes to which guy. One of them is rated 62.6, which is the same as Mike Glennon. And one of them is rated 106. Who has 106? Unlimited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's Andy Dalton has 106 Holy. to Russell Wilson's 62.6. Now with his highest interception rate of his career, Mr. MVP, Mr. Moonball has not been good. Yeah. You, you want to know what makes it oh, man. troubling is he's, he's not really good against pass rush, huh? Yeah, what's that Aaron Donald guy going to yeah, do? Yeah, that's, that's a problem. I mean, I Sean McVay averages four sacks on Russell Wilson when they play. Um, personally, it, personally, he gets in the game, <laughs> crushes Russ from behind. I he thought, never sees him coming. The Broncos proved that we can do that, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, Ru Russell Wilson's a sit to me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm not starting Russell Wilson in my championship against Unlimited. these Rams. Limited, and that feels so weird to say. I, Russell Wilson or Baker Mayfield? Baker, it was the perfect example. I would. Oh, I play, play Baker. Baker for sure. What wow. about this Ryan exact Tannehill. game, Jared Goff? Oh man! At that point, you got to play Russ, right? You got to yeah, hope you get the big game from Russ, right? Exactly. We know what Russ can do. He can throw it to the moon and back into the arms of DK Metcalf. It is not impossible for him to have a good game. I would play him over Jared Goff. But when you're talking about you know a top, all the top ten, top twelve options, I, I don't, I don't think Russ is in that. He doesn't belong there. Well, I mean, it's it's a trickle down, you know, chicken or egg thing. DK Metcalf was the wide receiver two through the first nine weeks. He has the wide receiver 23 over the last five, averaging the same fantasy points per game as Russell Gage. That's where where DK Metcalf is. Oof. So, uh, and then Tyler Lockett is, I think, a, a sit. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's certainly uh, someone that you don't need to start. I've had so many questions online uh, at jointhefoot.com that are pick out of these wide receiver groups, and, and Lockett has often been the bench. So he's not an automatic lock in your lineup. Tyler Lockett or Hollywood Brown? Neither neither have a good matchup, so I, I would go with Tyler Lockett there. One of them's on fire. I was going to say I'd probably go with the guy that's been producing over the last four weeks. Sure. Oh, but I mean, it's cl it's close. It's a good yeah. question. Uh, and Tyler Lockett or DJ Moore? DJ Moore. Ah, we did it. We did it, America. Definitely. Backed Definitely. him into a corner. All right, Daryl Henderson, the start of the week <laughs> on the Rams side for Jason. He's the RB23 in our consensus rankings. Chris Carson is a start, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, they – I feel like the storyline for them every week is just – you keep playing their two pass catching options. That's right. You you play both of those guys, and they can they can be fine. You can, but I mean, Cooper Cup Cooper has been an Cup. uninspiring wide receiver. Twenty three on the season. He's the wide receiver twenty three because he had a week of eleven for one forty five. But yeah, I mean, and a nine for one hundred seven, and a, he has know, a, he's not scoring. He's got three touchdowns. Right. That, that's what made his entire twenty nineteen season. Uh, relevant. He had ten touchdowns last year. It's three this year. I mean, Cooper Cup on the season. Unfortunately, it, it it hasn't just been well. He's been fine for you. He he hasn't been what you wanted when you drafted him. He hasn't been last year, but he is actively hurting your team for the majority of the season. Right, because he's locked in. Yeah, 
And and Robert Woods has double the touchdowns that he has. And last year, Robert Woods had no touchdowns. 2020, man. Robert Woods. Yeah. And then Tyler, Tyler Higby, I brought up. I like him as a tight end solution for your team this week. I think I think my friend across the desk might be playing him this week. I don't know. I don't know because I, I do like Tyler Higby. I, I agree with you. The matchup is there. The Seahawks the last six weeks, 26th against fantasy wide receivers. But I also really agree with Jason on Austin Hooper that we were talking about it, that the Jets feel like last year's Arizona Cardinals where it didn't – eventually you got to the point of you just trust the process. It doesn't matter who's playing the Cardinals. I mean, that's that's where Will Disley became a household name in fantasy football because he played against the Cardinals. So uh, it's, it's – It's a, a tough, tough it's call. It's a really, really tough call. But it's down. But it's my tight end streaming position uh, is between those two guys, Higby and Hooper. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And then it at, in the end it'll be Harrison Bryant who you should start. <laughs> <laughs> or Gerald Everett. Yeah, one yeah. of those two. Guys. Uh, yeah, I look if I can handle it being Harrison Bryant, but. Ugh. All right, the uh, Tennessee Titans at ten and four take on the Green Bay Packers at eleven and three. Packers are three point a three and a half point favorites. It's a beautiful, wonderful fifty six point over under in this game. That puts an implied point total of almost thirty for the Packers, twenty six for the Titans. Delicious. Yeah, this I mean, is what uh, you want for fantasy football championship week. I wanted Ryan Tannehill to be my quarterback start of the week. I was a little bit worried about the weather. That's why I I went with Deshaun right. Watson. It's going to be very cold. It's it's in the twenties. Supposed to feel like teens, and and that doesn't usually affect fantasy production that much cold weather unless it drops well below freezing um historically Aaron Rodgers has the same exact career average in bad weather as he does in good weather this is a Lambo Rodgers game um it's obviously cold season for the Yeti this is a Derrick Henry was he Derek, the abominable snowman this week. I think he is might. Is that more formidable than a Yeti? That's the king of the Yetis. Well, they're, they're, really? Yeah, I, I don't thought know that they were kind of synonyms. They are. Uh, but the, to, the Yeti is a forest-dwelling Bigfoot. Really? Abominable snowman is a mountain-dwelling Yeti. And this has been fact-checked by our team of experts? Look, I am a certified... He said it so confidently. Yeah, I think it has to be And which one's true. the Loch Ness Monster? That is a completely different type oh, okay. of animal. Okay. Look, and, and I, Bigfoot is not a Yeti? Bigfoot is a Yeti. Is he? Yes. Not, Bigfo Bigfo not Yeti. Bigfoot's like his surname. No. No, so I, look, I liked it, but I was already talking. And no, it's fine. We don't need... <laughs> I mean, this is a long show. A Santa Ladon. At this point, it's just us three. But There's no one here. <laughs> Derek Henry should... Say what you want. Whatever, whatever creature he turns into... We'll score a ton of fantasy yes. points. That creature will be great. The matchup is awesome. The weather is perfect for him. Um, I, I expect monstrous things for Derrick Henry. And I, I do think Ryan Tannehill will be good, A.J. Brown, Corey Davis. Uh, I'm, I'm going to start almost all of these pieces. Yeah, let's hope A.J. Brown can do more over against Jair Alexander than Robbie Anderson did last week. Aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers is a must-start this week. Tennessee on the road, bad defense against opposing fantasy quarterbacks. Devontae Adams, you know, we were so disappointed in his 11 or 12 fantasy points last week. Um, I'm expecting big things this week. And I think Aaron Jones is a great start as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, and and Robert Tunyon. Tunyon is a great tight end. Uh, TD Tunyon. According to one producer. <laughs> TD Tunyon. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think that there is any questionable carefully. asset. Um <laughs> on either side of the ball that is regularly started in fantasy Corey that Davis. I'm going to sit. Like, Corey Davis is absolutely uh, in my lineup. Mm -hmm. I'll take him over all the T.Y. Hilton groupings. It's uh, amazing we've gotten to the point where that sentence came out of your mouth. Corey Davis is absolutely in my lineup. Well, and you expect... Bash Jason Moore, <laughs> You expect uh, Jair Alexander. I, I expect him to be more on A.J. Brown. Yeah, watching last week, you know, it's just a matter of uh, I think he lines up on one side of the field, and if they move, they were flipping Robbie. Robbie was not always on Jair last yeah. week. It was Teddy Bridgewater issues too. All right, Buff. It, it is amazing though what Tennessee can do. They can run, 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 and then that play action. It's like a play action 
supercharged play action. Mm -hmm. It's one that's like they unlocking They charge a, it by running. Yes, every run. And then when they use it, the defense is like... All at the line of scrimmage. Oh, it's all 12. It's like a goal line defense. And then all of a sudden... They have no choice. You do not have a choice. Derrick Henry is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, the Monday night football game is the Buffalo Bills at 11-3 and three against the New England Patriots. Yada, yada. That's a game. All right, we're moving on. I and, do not uh, want to talk about this game. I do not want to talk about Josh Allen. The more that I have looked into... Yeah, we've been talking, right? Yeah, The I mean, I, I've dug so deep because this matters. You were very confident at the beginning of the week. And I am super less confident you now. Were, you were, dare I say, uh, insulting to yes. my good friend Andy Holloway. If I had Josh Allen and I had Tom Brady, I would play Tom Brady. What? Yeah. Now, oh man! Don't now the turns of table. <laughs> don't hear what I'm not saying. <laughs> Josh Allen is not a bench. Josh Allen is not someone that I'm saying. You Josh need Allen to or Lamar Jackson? I would take Josh <laughs> Allen. Okay. I would take the fire that he's been All in, right. and, and 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 not the fire that Lamar Jackson has been in. One has been a lot longer and and more frequent this year than the other. Um, so yeah, I would take the. Instead of the brush fire, I'm taking the forest fire. If I am rep <laughs> if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. I think it was said on the footcast yesterday, so I will say why I want to play Tom Brady over Josh Allen. I do. I'm with Jason. I do not believe Josh Allen is a Grinch. He is not a bust. He will not score 40 against the Patriots this week. I want a shot at 40. I need a championship winner at the position. I think Josh Allen will do exactly what he did against a formidable Pittsburgh defense that was healthy earlier in the year, which is 20 to 24 points. I think you will get that against New England this week, but I do not believe you're going to get a scorched earth. The only way you can make that argument, you can't look backwards at all of his games against New England. You can only do it narrative-based. You can say, well, the Patriots are eliminated, and this is the first time they've been eliminated, and the Patriots, uh, their defense, no Stephon Gilmore, they're going to disintegrate. Well, look... Bill Belichick's career has not been made on Stephon Gilmore on defense. It's been made on scheming and planning for what the opposing team is bringing in to the game. Look, you can go narrative street. He's been on fire. Josh Allen will just continue to do it, and it can 100% happen. Um, I am just looking for 40. Yeah, the the big game is the issue. I, I, I think the baseline is actually still safe. With Josh Allen, I don't think you're going to go out there and have him score ten points. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you that he, you know, his opportunity to go out and win your championship ma matchup, the way that he has gotten you there so many times, single-handedly winning the week for you, I doubt it happens this week. And my fantasy points allowed above opponents' average metric. The New England Patriots are the worst matchup in the league, averaging four points fewer than the opponent's average. I am looking forward to this game. I would love, to, as a, uh, as somebody who picked Josh Allen to be the NFL MVP and Buffalo to go to the Super Bowl before the year, this would be quite the exclamation point on their division championship. They are seven-point favorites. It's a 46-point over-under. Uh, Buffalo won 24-21 in Week 8. Um, it, it's going to be a fun, fun game. Yeah, and this is this is the Patriots' Super Bowl because they're out. It is. They're out of the playoffs. And it's a divisional. They have nothing yeah. else to do here except make the Buffalo Bills – doubt themselves it feels like a you're going to take this division title from our cold dead hands yep. situation um speaking of cold dead hands Cam i'm not Newton. I'm, st I'm not starting <laughs> i'm not oh, starting no. oh. any patriots outside of a glance damian harris's way booty drooping oh no mm. booty mm. pooping <laughs> yeah i mean are you glancing damian harris's direction uh no Okay, so so can we just not talk about them? No, is is Damian we've talked Harris about gonna, them a lot over the last twenty is years. Is Damian Harris going to play? He is questionable at this point, and Sony Michelle is back, getting you know ten carries or I, so. I thought you were going to say the only questionable name worth glancing at is Sony because I I, I don't expect uh, Damian Harris to be active. But no, I'm I'm not glancing anybody's if, direction. If Damian Harris is out, then I'm willing to you know peek peek over the wall at. Sony Michelle, with that level of confidence. Yeah. Stephon Diggs is supposed to be back out there. Obviously, that's that's huge, and you can't you can't sit Diggs. I mean, that's just not an option for your team. Cole Beasley. If you had Diggs, 
uh, on your team and you had Brady and Josh Allen, would you roll the the Diggs Josh Allen stack? Wow. Probably. Yeah, I mean it, it's nice to have a stack and with Gilmore out I would probably because it it would have been you know two bills carrying me all the way there at that point in time and and how do you it's go the core of your how do you team. go away from that it's the core of your team you just still, mentally speaking you, you still in on Beasley if John Brown is out yes yeah he's been yeah. so good already set a career high in receptions receiving yards yards per reception two games to go I mean Josh Allen is dissecting in defenses and uh, I hope he scorches earth here and has I hope he proves us wrong that you can't have a 40 point game against the Patriots. I really do. I'm I'm going to root for a clobbering. Well, I was going to say my anti tilt lock it in in the beginning of the week strategy works a lot better when you slowly get on board over the course of the whole week. Right. That has helped me. Had you been so against it right now, you could, you know, might not be working. Mike, do you want to weigh in on your thoughts oh, on the man, Josh Allen game at all? 1000% <laughs> I'm playing Josh Allen over Tom Brady. I, yes. I can't tell if you're telling the <laughs> yes. truth or not. I would, I would play Tom Brady over Josh Allen. Good, because he's in he's in my lineup right you, now. No, you locked him in. You're not wavering. Uh we have Foot Clan game day alerts at jointhefoot.com. <laughs> Sunday live one hour before kickoff. Are you returning this week, Mike? Are you back I, for Sunday live? I believe I am back this week. Jason battled through an eyelash oh, for most of Sunday live. I know. Part of a champion. I I tuned in. I saw it. It, it was incredible. It, it was, was watering. It was pretty gruesome. I we should have had a warning label gratuitous about. content right okay not for children <laughs> we have another segment prop it like it's hot presented by monkey knife fight all righty our favorite week 16 props from monkey knife fight you can partake with us at ballerspicks.com use the code ballers i recommend you do mm -hmm. my Prop this week. Dalvin Cook, the line is set at 86.5 rushing yards against New Orleans. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am smashing the more button. Okay. I like it. Dalvin has thank been you. over that. Thank thank me for <laughs> as well. I look, we need Dalvin, Mike. Let's yes, hold we hands. Do. We need him. This is not just wishful thinking, though. Dalvin has been over that 86.5 rushing yard mark. Seven out of the last eight weeks. It's in the DNA of the team to feed him. He's going to break a big play or five, 86 and a half. I'm not worried about it. Mm. All right. I'm going. I'm, I'm uh, doubling down on my Grinch. Let me get this. Mr. Grinch. Grinch. Josh Jacobs, the line uh, when I was going through the props, 72 and a half rushing yards. I will take the less. He, in fact, averages only 70 yards per game. And in his last eight games, he has only surpassed 72 and a half rushing yards three times. The Miami defense is legit. I'm taking the less. It's a pretty, pretty good prop. And for me, Lamar Jackson, Mr. On Fire, mm -hmm. he has a line of 215 and a half passing yards. It might not surprise you based on what I said in the matchup. I am taking less than 215. He's only had more than 215 three times on the season. And we, do, we don't care if he has that. Right. That's no, the, yeah, for fantasy, for you, he's, he's going to rush. These are straight-up passing yards. Right. The New York Giants passing defense has been absolutely fantastic. This is a mark that Lamar doesn't usually hit anyways. I'm yeah. taking less yeah. than 215. All right, ballerspicks.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get that deposit match over there if you want to play any of their prop games at ballerspicks.com. We also want to thank Pristine Auction as we close out this uh, Santa Ladon Megala show, whatever you want to call it. Um, heading into the holiday season, please check them out. Calvin Ridley signed jersey, $83 yesterday. And uh, our Christmas giveaway video, it's still up on YouTube. You can, you, there's still time to enter. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. So still you can win days. some stuff. Yeah. Uh, PristineAuction.com, use the code BALLERS. You get a $10 credit. You guys have any parting words heading into this uh, holiday yes. weekend? Merry Christmas. Yes, and I'll say what, whatever holiday you are celebrating, enjoy it. Yeah, it's been a, a, a weird year, but I'm really looking forward to it. The kids are so excited, and uh, I'm excited for Dalvin Cook. Come on. Let's oh, go. baby. Let's go. Stay safe, everybody. Good luck, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com.
and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>